Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here in Erlingrat. Alright. Uh, this one, wheat, 19,768. Is there anything else in here? No. Right, start. 20,000 litres of wheat in there, which is close to 10 grand that we'll get for that. Which ain't too shabby. You you know what I'm going to do with this one? I'm actually going to go there. Uh, go to that one. Turn that on. Okay, like that. There. And then go to this tractor. Now, he's only got a, a 21,000 litre capacity, unfortunately. Right, the combine's completely full at the moment. I think, unfortunately, because we've got a smaller trailer for this particular job, we're not going to fit it all in. And that means that we're going to have to take it all the way over to the grain mill, tip it out, and then come back and do it again. So maybe we'll do that now with the 10,000 litres that we've got right here, and then we'll come back to it. But we won't worry about it just for a second. So I got 24,700 litres of beans in here. I'm going to take these over to the grain mill, and we're going to sell them. And then once we've done that, we will see how much we've got left, whether it's worth traveling a little bit further up to where the train is and putting it in there if we've got like a thousand liters left it's not going to be worth it if we've got four thousand liters left that's 600 euros which yes not a lot but it's still you know a little bit more in the kitty i reckon it's probably worth the effort for 600 euros so we'll if it's six if it's four thousand or more we will do the drive up to the other grain store. We will tip out the soybeans and we'll load them into the train. If it's less than 4,000, we will just sell them right here. And that extra 150 euros per 1,000 litres that we would get, we won't worry about. I think that's about right. That's a reasonable balance for things, I think. So I'm hoping it is. It's not a reasonable balance. There's... Not really a lot I can do about it, because, like, this is a week ahead for you. I'm a week in the past. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a voice, I'm blast from the past right here. Long time ago, back when the world was young and Frith was already old, this was being recorded. Many things will have happened in your lives between the time that this was recorded and the time that you actually get to watch it. So here we go. This is it. The moment of truth. How much are we going to be left with? So I'm just watching it. It's going down to 10,000 litres. And now... Ooh. I got 1,181. I got well over 1,000 litres went in there. 740 at the grain mill. Supermarket's a bit better. All right. 5,000 litres. I could have had 6,000 litres. Could have had six times 150, which is a fair old slice. We're not getting that much, but we are getting five times that, so that's 750 euros. That's probably the difference between being able to afford the mower and not, to be honest. So take this up. We will, once I've tipped this into the store, we can complete the jobs that we've got going. You see the canola job, we don't need to worry about that one. And the other wheat job, we're choosing not to worry about that one, purely because it's going to take too long otherwise, and I want the money. And, right, you come on round here like this. And then we can seriously consider whether or not we decide to go and buy the fence or the ridgy track. Probably I'll go with the ridgy track because it's the new one. Because it's the sort of the, the new kid on the block. We'll we'll give it a go. We'll, we'll we'll give it a chance. Bit more expensive, I know, but I still think that we should try it out. Just you know, for the sake of trying it out. Why have you stopped at ten thousand five? Oh yeah, of course. It does not like loading anything when you're not there to stare at it. If you're not staring at it, it's not interested. It's one of those, it's, it's, it's one of these, it's kind of like a, um, a, a 
poor workman who will only work when you're standing over him, staring at him to make sure he's actually doing his work. And then as soon as you turn your back, you know, thinking that maybe you can trust him just for once, he goes and lets you down. That's what we got right here with the train. So let's send this train off. We got 5,385 litres of soybeans, 19,768 litres of wheat. If we take a look in here, it's 496 for the wheat and soybeans are 898. Both pretty good prices. Oats are also a high price and the canola right there obviously is a very, very low price that we can't do anything with. So we're going to go herring off up through this way. As soon as I've sold this... I can skip back over to the canola and it's already 50% full on the combine. I'm thinking what we'll end up doing is we will sell, we'll take the first lot of canola and take it over and get rid of it. Yes, I want to sell everything. 14,644. I'd say that was pretty good. 14,644, and considering how much is left on this field, I am going to go on round to the combine right here, and I'm going to take just that little bit of extra that he's got so that we've got about 15,000 litres on our trailer, and we're going to go and sell all of it, all of it together. There... Uh, and that makes 15,187 litres. So I'll take this lot here down to... This, where's this guy? This is going to the Felsbring Grain Mill, isn't it? Let's go and have a look. Right. Harvesting there. That's not Felsbring. It's just going to the Grain Mill. So I've got complete there. That's 4,000. I can collect that one. And that one there, field 19, I can collect that one. I have field 21 harvesting to do over there. Still haven't gotten... You know what? Don't go anywhere with this one. I've got 76,000 euros at the moment. It's not enough to buy the expensive tractor that I was thinking about purchasing. But it is enough to go and buy the tractor here. And the reason that I want to do that right now and get started with this is because if I don't... Right, we'll set up a wide tire. I'll go for the white. No, actually, you know what? This would be a standard tire. Tractor is an old tractor. We would just have standard tires on this one. Um, so I will... Oh, unless we would go for doubles. Oh. We don't have the option for doubles. So no, we would just go for that. Uh, buy there, 39,000. We can get started with the mowing with this one. We'll do. We'll get started with the mowing, and then we'll worry about the combining to help out with that. So mowers in here. It was this one that I was going to go for. Now the disadvantage with this mower is that it does tend to lean you over to one side, whereas this one at four meters wide, we do have another one over here, which was the Cavernland set. That one is also four meters wide. So there's. That mower right there, trailed mower. Back, or oh, we've got that trailed mower over there. Or oh, we've got the side-mounted mower right here. The advantage with the trailed mower is you've got this wonderful four-meter-wide cutting disc, uh, cutting bed, but you don't have that weight sort of leaning you over to one side tractor, which is an advantage. However, when it comes to actual gameplay, it's a lot easier to use these, which is the main reason I'm actually going for this one today. Um, plus, it's a thousand euros cheaper. I've still got 20 grand left over after that, you know. That's not bad. 20,000 left over. But there's our Bura, the 6105. We're going to take this bad boy over to our farm. Okay, this thing does actually look really cool. Bring it round here, put it into the sunlight a little bit. Look at that. The Bura 6105 reporting for duty, sir. So now he's reported for duty. We need to hook him on to the mower, get him back to our farm. The other downside of this, of course, is that the Bura doesn't have front weight 
which means that he's going to sit up a little bit. But, I mean, when the mower is down on the ground, that shouldn't be so much of an issue. And this mower being 4.2, 4.3 meters wide, it should get through the mowing in our field at a fairly reasonable rate, I would say. See why it won't. I'd say that it's going to get through there at a very reasonable rate. And then once we've got a good chunk of the mowing done, I'm going to go twice around the edge with this one, I should think. Um, going to try and like follow the actual outside edge of the field with the mower and then we'll go and turn it round and sort of do the next round. So I want to unfold it. It goes out like that. Roars up through there like that. You know, actually we should just start mowing. There's no point in going anywhere else. So he goes roaring up through there like that. And all I got to do is just kind of like follow the edge of the field roughly with the tractor. And then when we go back round and we do the next round around the outside, you'll see we're going to be facing in the opposite direction. And so it'll be just like tidying up the edge. And this is why we've got to make sure there's no tree stumps there. Now, I mean, technically, you would do that after you had gone and cut the inside of the field. This bit now you do and then you carry on and do the rest of the field and then you do the last little bit of tidy up that's the the last bit you do you don't go round and do the outside round next but me i'm gonna do things differently now i am keeping further in than i did last time i'm aware that the mower itself will go further in uh, further towards the outside than what the tractor wheels are going at the moment so I am sort of trying to keep that into account as well, but I also, I'm just very much aware that we were a little bit too greedy with it last time, and so there were patches that we didn't cut properly, and it just sort of didn't seem right. So this time I'm just staying out a little bit further until we get in there with the plow and possibly a little bit of the landscaping, and we can like straighten things out a little bit. So like where that clump of trees is, we could quite possibly do things a bit differently in there. Um, eventually clear out some of those trees and then cut straight across there. I mean, we could end up leaving the trees. You've got to remember that we are also going to be building our main yard up here where it's a little bit more level. Like, we're going to be, we're planning to have cattle up here. So they'll eventually come up to this side of it. Helper B has got an early full grain tank. Yeah, that's going to just stay being Helper B with a full grain tank for a little while because I would like to keep this mower going now. We've committed to starting another round of mowing. We've committed to making some silage, which will be taken over to the BGA. So if we're going to do that, we're going to need to make sure that we do the job properly. So we're going it, to... It, it means that we've got to kind of keep things running with it that's potentially where it will start to get a little bit dull it got a little bit dull last time but I'm also hoping that because I've now got 21,000 euros spare right now and I've got a canola job and another wheat job still to do plus I've got a whole load of silage that I can go and sell what I'm hoping is that I will be able to make a little bit of money. And then I can use that little bit of money to buy a better quality uh, rake than the one we had. Like, we'll do... I don't need to... I'm not going to do hay. I can't do hay at the moment. I don't have a baler. We can't sell hay loose. We're doing seasons. And uh, no, we're not doing seasons. Um, we still can't sell hay loose. Regardless of whether we're doing seasons or otherwise, we can't, um, we, well, I suppose actually we could sell the hay loose. Just take it straight. We can't sell it at the BGA, though. We can only sell it at the other place, and I don't really want to do that. 
That's, that's not really something that I had on my to-do list of um, little plans that I had for this series, doing loose hay. If we're going to do hay, it will be properly baled up. Now, do I do a second round with the mower? I think I'm going to. I'm going to commit. I'm going to do a second round with the mower, and then we will do the outside round with the mower, and that's going to give us a good wide stretch to work with and then we can um, let the mower just kind of carry on and what we can also I love that it's not slowing down really stupidly slowly going up the hill as well that's actually really awesome and um, what we can also do is once the mower has gotten a little way across the field we can also get the get a well get a rake going now i initially was thinking that we'd be using our really small tractor to use the rake that we've got at the moment but i'm actually thinking that it would be in our best interest if we bought a bigger rake now this does mean that we may not be able to use the tractor that we've got i mean the rake that we mind you that rake's not all that bad is it that one that we've got. We'll just hold off making a decision on that one. If I can use the little Kramer for doing the raking, I figured that that would be pretty good because, you know, it means that the other tractors are still freed up. So this one can keep mowing. The electric tractor can keep going with dragging silage backwards and forwards. And then the little Kramer can do that work. So, yeah, that would be good, but on the other hand, another rake would be able to rake up more than the what the little Kramer can do at the moment, and that might actually benefit us more than keeping three tractors running. I'm not sure. This is a bit of a tough call, to be honest. Let's keep running with this. Let's just keep going, just for a minute, and then we can make our decision in a little while. We're going to have a look. I know that the rake we've got is, is reasonable, and we can do it with the Kramer. I mean, it is a little bit of a struggle for that poor Kramer to pull it, but he does do it, just. Maybe, I mean, I, I don't really want to. I was kind of wondering, maybe it's time to retire the Kramer, but I'm also thinking that, you know, I know plenty of farms that have got these little old tractors and they keep them because they're going to use them and they end up just sort of rusting away and they never actually use them. But uh, I don't know if we really want to base all of our financial decisions on that kind of um, thing, you know, that, that seems a little bit too much sentimentality. We don't, we don't want too much sentimentality. We, we need to... But then, on the other hand, the Kramer is not worth a lot, is it? So, little point, like, we're not, we're not going to make our fortune selling that tractor, are we? So, as we're not going to make a vast sum of money selling the tractor, maybe keeping the tractor is the sensible option. But there's no real reason for us to sell the tractor, because we're just not going to get any money for it. I mean, that's as good a reason not to sell it as any I can think of. I don't know about you guys. Certainly, uh, I reckon that. I reckon, yeah. All right, anyway, anyway, it doesn't really matter. That's just me kind of finding things to talk about. So I need to go once more around the field, once more onto the breach, dear friends. Um, do I or don't I do that right now? Let me just stop there. Now, ordinarily, you wouldn't if you were actually doing this job. I mean, we could we just shut that one off a second. And we go in here and we will have a look at our little bit of a job over here. So we've got grass, fruit types, growth right in there. Now, there's a lot of grass in there. Do I really need to be going to the outside? No, I don't think I do. Oops, didn't want to do that. We'll think about doing the outside round of the fields later on, maybe, possibly. 
Right now, we're not going to do the outside round of the field. What we're going to do is we're going to bring the tractor down over here, and I'm just going to set the hired help going, and I'm going to see how it can cope. We'll see how it copes with the Bura pulling up and down the runs on this hill right here. So, um, looking at the map at the moment, in the little corner there to see. So, it's, it's going to be, actually, it's going to be about there that we'd be running. So, I need to actually bring it all the way over here like this and... That is where it's going to be running, like that. So start you up. And I don't want to do the AI extension on this. I'm curious what whether the AI extension would even be able to cope with it. I do that onto there. I've never tried AI extension on mowing. And he will go to here. So we've done the edge of our marked out field. And then he goes up round there and does turn round. He does all right on that bit. So we've got, there's our line right there. And you can see here, there's actually like some parts of it up there. Where I haven't even gotten all of the marked out field. Anywhere that says it requires plowing is our field. And... There's parts of the field that I haven't actually ploughed. I haven't actually cut, like, along there. Because I was staying in quite a way. There is some there that hasn't actually been done. But that's fine. I'm, I'm quite happy with that. So, he's going to go through there. And the mowing is underway. So, there's a little tiny bit that got missed over there. I don't think that's going to make much difference to anything. All right, I'm going to let him carry on there. And then I've got this one right here. So what have we got left on that field? As the combine has stopped and it's completely full, I'm going to go and completely fill up the trailer at the moment from this one. And then I will drive back out onto the road and we will go and take this over. So we need to get all the way over to the Felsbrun not the Felsbrun grain mill, sorry. Uh, we need to take this all the way over to the grain mill. It's the normal grain mill. And we can tip it in there. It won't. We won't be getting any sail from this bit. This is the bit that is just to kind of keep the job running. There we go. 20,000 litres, 21,000 litres of canola in here. This tractor's struggling to pull it up this hill. The tractor doesn't have any kind of front weight. It's 6145M. I don't know what the horsepower of this tractor is. Does anybody know what the horsepower of this tractor is without me having to go and look it up in the shop? Also, he's only got a 43K top speed. Um, well, I suppose actually that's comparable to several of the others. It's just that, uh, you know, you look at the fence and the fence, the fence got a massively high top speed, which I really, really like. And so then when I go and look at the others and see the slower top speeds, I just end up being disappointed. I just end up being disappointed with it. So Bura is doing a great job down there. Just gonna let him keep going. I'm, I was wondering about taking a shortcut across our field with this. And I thought, no, I won't do that, because this is for business elsewhere. And also, I don't want to risk a load of canola seeds being spread across my grass, because then that's going to potentially cause me issues. I was about to go past that lorry there, and then that car pulled in and put paid to that little plan. Right, which way are you going, lorry? You're going up that way. I'm going to need to go this way as well. Which way do I go next? Like, you're going up to here. Are you going to turn left here and go into town? Or are you going straight on? Because if you're going straight on, I'm thinking I'm going to go into town. I am. I'm going to go into town in here. And then i got to wait for... Yep, there we go. That one can go up, and if I go this way, there's a roundabout right there, but if I turn right here and go past the train station, 
I can actually avoid the hassle of the roundabout right there and go whizzing up here straight towards that grain mill tip out the canola and then we got to drive all the way back again and once I've gotten back up there I'll unload what I can off of the John Deere off the combine up there and then we've got one more job that we want to get going and that's the last job that's available in the valley at the moment Quite possibly another job or two will come up because we've got a few harvest jobs that we finished. So it's quite likely that a few of them will then come up. But there's this field, field 21, just in on our left right now. That one is ready to go and they're asking for our assistance with doing that job. So we're going to take it into there. That one, I believe, though, we've got to transport to the supermarket rather than right here. It would be nice if we could bring it right here. Have a look. Uh, harvest it. Oh, see, we got field nine. There's cultivating job there already. Uh, the harvesting right here, 2,000. See, we don't get a lot, but I'm going to borrow items. I'm going to accept that one already. There, so that one's ready to go. 70% transported for field 23. I'm going to drive all the way back up to field 23. This is the time-consuming bit, is the driving backwards and forwards. To drive all the way back up here. Now, someone did say that they thought that I should be able to use the reset to shop if I wanted to for some things. Such as, I don't think you can use them for contracts like this, but with my own machinery, when I've driven all the way across the map and then I'm on my way back so obviously if i've got a fertilizer spinner that's got fertilizer in it if i reset that to the shop i lose the fertilizer that's in there so that's not a valid option for me but if i'm driving along and my machine is empty then i had a few people say few i had at least two people say because someone was talking about it and i'm pretty sure someone else agreed with it and said yeah that would be a good idea um allow me a couple of resets per day so i can basically reset to shop a couple times a day just to like speed things up a little bit now obviously i don't know if it would work with this i don't think this situation really applies but if i've emptied out my fertilizer spinner and i'm driving back to the shop from you know fields that are about as far away from the shop as you can get uh, the suggestion was that instead of having to drive all of that distance yet again, just reset it to the shop. And I can do this, say, up to three times a day. And I kind of like this idea, I must admit. Definitely not against this idea in the slightest, because it's going to make life a lot easier for me. What are you doing? Right. Quite know why he's decided to do something a little bit odd and weird right there. Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.